Today is July the 20th. Today, we see that Judah will be restored. Reading through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read Isaiah chapters 61 to 63. Now, this is part of a section that many scholars call Trito Isaiah. They talk about Isaiah chapters 1 through 39, written probably by Isaiah the prophet in the 8th century. Deutero Isaiah chapters 40 to 45. These contain the four servant psalms, uh, servant songs, and that's primarily uh, their purpose to communicate that uh, written uh, in their minds later. And then Trito Isaiah, chapters 56 to 66, which includes uh, references to a Jerusalem that is returning from exile. Now, the only reason to divide Isaiah up like this is if you believe that prophecy is not possible. Um, if prophecy is not possible and you're talking about Jerusalem returning from exile, then obviously it has to be written after Jerusalem returns from exile. But if we believe that prophecy is possible, if we believe that God spoke to his prophets and revealed that to them things that were going to happen, it's no problem for us. We believe that Isaiah was written by one man in the 8th century. Uh, the first 39 chapters condemning Israel for their current actions, and then chapters 40 through 46 talking to a future Israel that would be exiled and would then return from the exile. Now, in these chapters, if you look at chapter 61, the first verse says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim the captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. In the book of Luke, in uh, Luke chapter 4, Jesus uh, stands in the synagogue and he looks for this word. Uh, he, he reads it to the crowd and then he sits down and says, this is fulfilled today, referring to himself. Jesus applies this verse to himself and how appropriate that is. Then later in Luke chapter 7, when John uh, sent two disciples to Jesus to ask him, are you the one who is to come or do we look for another? Jesus responded with this verse. He said, tell John what you've seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the mute speak. The brokenhearted are comforted, captives are released. The gospel is being preached. This verse was important to Jesus, and John apparently knew that verse too. Today, enjoy as you read Isaiah chapter 61 to 63. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks, that the Lord has planted for his own glory. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities destroyed long ago. They will revive them, though they have been deserted for many generations. Foreigners will be your servants. They will feed your flocks and plow your fields and tend your vineyards. You will be called priests of the land, ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures of the nations and boast in their riches, 
Instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor, for you possess a double portion of prosperity in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be recognized and honored among the nations. Everyone will realize that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in the robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. The sovereign Lord will show his justice to the nations of the world. Everyone will praise him. His righteousness will be like a garden in early spring, with plants springing up everywhere. Isaiah 62 Because I love Zion, I will not keep still. Because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I cannot remain silent. I will not stop praying for her until her righteousness shines like the dawn, and her salvation blazes like a burning torch. The nations will see your righteousness. World leaders will be blinded by your glory, and you will be given a new home by the Lord's own mouth. The Lord will hold you in his hand for all to see, a splendid crown in the hand of God. Never again will you be called the forsaken city or the desolate land. Your new name will be the city of God's delight and the bride of God. For the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. Your children will commit themselves to you, O Jerusalem, just as a young man commits himself to his bride. Then God will rejoice over you as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride. O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen on your walls. They will pray day and night continually. Take no rest, all you who pray to the Lord. Give the Lord no rest until he completes his work, until he makes Jerusalem the pride of the earth. The Lord has sworn to Jerusalem by his own strength, I will never again hand you over to your enemies. Never again will foreign warriors come and take away your grain and new wine. You raise the grain and you will eat it, praising the Lord. Within the courtyards of the temple, you yourselves will drink the wine you have pressed. Go out through the gates. Prepare the highway for my people to return. Smooth out the road. Pull out the boulders. Raise a flag for all the nations to see. The Lord has sent this message to every land. Tell the people of Israel, Look, your Savior is coming. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. They will be called holy people, and the people redeemed by the Lord, and Jerusalem will be known as the desirable place, and the city no longer forsaken. Isaiah 63 Who is this who comes from Edom, from the city of Basra, with his clothing stained red? Who is this in royal robes, marching in his great strength? It is I, the Lord, announcing your salvation. It is I, the Lord, who has the power to save. Why are your clothes so red, as if you have been treading out grapes? I have been treading the winepress alone. No one was there to help me. In my anger, I have trampled my enemies, as if they were grapes. In my fury, I have trampled my foes. Their blood has stained my clothes. For the time has come for me to avenge my people, to ransom them from their oppressors. I was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So I myself stepped in to save them with my strong arm, and my wrath sustained me. I crushed the nations in my anger and made them stagger and fall to the ground, spilling their blood upon the earth. I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I will praise the Lord for all he has done. I will rejoice in his great goodness to Israel, which he has granted according to his mercy and love. He said, They are my very own people. Surely they will not betray me again. And he became their savior. In all their suffering, he also suffered, and he personally rescued them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them through all the years. But they rebelled against him and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he became their enemy and fought against them. Then they remembered those days of old when Moses led his people out of Egypt. They cried out, Where is the one who brought Israel through the sea with Moses as their shepherd? Where is the one who sent his Holy Spirit to be among the people? 
Where is the one whose power was displayed when Moses lifted his hand, the one who divided the sea before them? Where is the one whose power was displayed when Moses lifted up his hand, the one who divided the sea before them, making himself famous forever? Where is the one who led them through the bottom of the sea? They were like fine stallions racing through the desert, never stumbling. As with cattle going down into a peaceful valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. You led your people, Lord, and gained a magnificent reputation. Lord, look down from heaven, look for your holy, glorious home, and see us. Where is the passion and might you used to show on our behalf? Where are your mercy and compassion now? Surely you are still our father, even if Abraham and Jacob would disown us. Lord, would you still be our father? Are you our redeemer from ages past? Lord, why have you allowed us to turn from your path? Why have you given us stubborn hearts so we no longer fear you? Return and help us, for we are your servants, the tribes that are your special possession. How briefly your holy people possessed your holy place, and now our enemies have destroyed it. Sometimes it seems as though we never belonged to you, as though we had never been known as your people. Scripture reading by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see the end of the book of Isaiah.